Thank you for tuning in. Um, today I'm going to be discussing macrocytic anemias. Um, I know my last video was a little bit longer than usual, but I think it was important to go over some of the facts. Um, but right now we're going to be heading into macrocytic anemias. So once again, our first identifier is going to be on your CBC, and you're going to be looking at the mean corpuscular volume, how big the red blood cell is. If it is above 100 or around 100, you're in macrocytic territory. So macrocytics are broken up into two categories, megaloblastic and non or megaloblastic and non-megaloblastic. Um, if there are issues with DNA synthesis, then it's going to be a megaloblastic condition. And if not, then it's going to be a non-megaloblastic. Before we get into the main megaloblastics, I just want to briefly touch on the three most common forms that you're going to see non-megaloblastic macrocytic anemia. Uh, so alcoholism, diamond black fan, and liver disease. Um, diamond black fan also just uniquely hits or with word precursors, specifically targeting RSP19. You're going to get an increase in, hemoglo in the fetal hemoglobin, and as you may or may not know, if you increase the he fetal hemoglobin, you're going to get actually just a bigger red blood cell. But that's really all about for non-megaloblastic. Um, but now we're going to go into like the main issues and like talk about megaloblastic. So these are all going to be vitamin deficiencies. So it's very possible that on an exam or when you're talking to a patient, it can be presented as um, very strict diet or lack of like tea and toast diet or lack of just eating a lot of um, folate or B12. So uh, some few factors we need to go into first. Um, the two main conditions for megaloblastic are going to be either B9 or B12. B9 is also called folate and B12 is also called cobalamin, so it can be interchanged on the exam. And um, these vitamins are absorbed. This is in the jejunum, and this is in the terminal ileum. And iron, once again, is uh, absorbed in the duodenum. So when you have a deficiency in either folate or cobalamin, you are going to see that during presentation, there's going to be an increase in homocysteine levels. This does not help you differentiate between B9 or B12, unfortunately. But if the, pres if the presentation of the patient does mention that there is going to be uh, peripheral neuropathy, decreased ability to sense and uh, difficulties walking, then you're going to want to think the B12 because um, for B12, you're going to have increased neurological conditions that are unique to B12 deficiencies, but not normally found in B9. Lastly, um, a differential in addition to neural neurological deficits you're also going to see a increase in methylmalonic acid for B12. So if you see an increased homocysteine and an increase for methylmalonic, then you're going to want to think B12. And if you do firecracker, you're also going to notice that the erotic aciduria is another megaloblastic macrocytic anemia. Thank you, Mr. Johnson, for pointing that out. I completely forgot about it. Erotic aciduria is going to be a decrease in pyrimidine synthesis, and this is going to be excreted through the urine. So you're going to get the similar effects of not being able to make DNA, but the issue here is that it's going to be excreted in the urine. So some things I also want to talk about for B12. It is uh, very interesting, and it can actually be um, caused different, in different ways. And this is actually done by using the Schilling test, which is a test to determine why you're having a low level of B12. So it's important to now understand how we get B12 into our system. And so the first thing is you're gonna ingest B12 and or uh, food that contains B12. And you're gonna have initially through your sal saliva, you're gonna have R binder. And R binder is gonna bind to your B12 and it's gonna go down your esophagus and into your stomach. Within your stomach, then you're gonna have uh, increased acid secretion and you're going to also have a intrinsic factor also released, which is from the parietal cells. So the R binder is going to be degraded and the intrinsic factor is going to be now placed onto B12. And now your intrinsic factor is going to go from your stomach and it's going to go down into your duodenum jejunum ileum. Terminal ileum is where it gets absorbed. And um, in that time, you're going to have the, like the ampulla of vatter and like stuff like this. And the pancreas is actually going to uh, release enzymes that are going to break down our bind, uh, intrinsic factor and that's going to help B12 get absorbed. So, um, so there's different uh, conditions that can cause this. 
one of the issues uh, that is commonly tested in elderly individuals that are presenting with a normal diet would be pernicious anemia. And pernicious anemia means that you have a difficulty absorbing B12 and this can be caused due to an autoimmune reaction targeting specific parietal cells within the stomach. The parietal cells are responsible for releasing acid as well as intrinsic factor. So what happens is there's antibodies that actually target the HK ATPase on the, in the stomach of the parietal cells and that destroys the parietal cells so it can't release intrinsic factor. So that could be another issue as to why you're not having B12. Um, but all in all, um, that is pretty much it for microcytic anemia. It's not too dense, um, and I hope that I hope that helped out. Thanks.